Sweet. And we are live. Welcome, coaches. How are y'all doing? Um, first off, let me say I am thrilled that you uh, shot my shot. It's slid, it slid in your DMs. You said yes. I fist pumped. We talked. You came on. Uh, so, Jake, thank you so much for being here. Um, I don't want to waste your time because I know you're a busy man. And if coaches don't know who you are, they're really not football fans. So um, my first question for you is, and I've always wanted to ask this, you've played in some big games. I think that's safe to say. How do you prepare yourself mentally for those big games, not to get like the jitters or anything like that? And how do you use that so I can teach my quarterback, you know, hey, this is what Jake Plummer does. Don't get nervous. It's a big game and all that. Like, what, what are your secrets? That was so long ago. You're asking me to, to kind of dive back in and, and don't worry about time, man. Like, you're not wasting my time. I, I like to share stories. I like to share experiences. Um, you know, what we did as athletes, what I did at a high level is not worth just keeping to myself because there's someone out there that can learn something that I went through that maybe helps them get through something. So you're not wasting my time, man. Right, this awesome. is fun. I enjoy it. So. Uh, that being said, I mean, yeah, big games, I guess it started out as, as far as, you know, my first real big game I played in was probably, you know, the day my dad came down, you know, my parents had split and I was in Pop Warner playing Optimus. We called it in Boise. And that was my first real big game because my dad was in town to watch me play football for the first time. So I was going off. I think I had, my brother said like 21 tackles and was crying in the game. and so emotional because it was like, my dad's here, you know, him. it was a powerful feeling. So that kind of thing, preparing for that big game was no more than just football, man. It was love. And then, you know, as I progressed through levels of junior high where we played in the city championship to a state championship my junior year and a state top state championship game my senior year, which we lost, then a national title game in, at ASU, then an AFC championship game at the Denver Broncos. You know, I was right at the door there to, to get in, to, to win it all. And so preparing for those games, you know, I like to limit distractions, you know, if I could, uh, you know, in, in, in a sense of limit them when I needed them to be like shelved, but mm -hmm. then bring them out when I needed to get away from, okay, I'm done. Let's have some fun now. Let's have dinner. Let's go talk. Let's go out and have a drink, whatever. Uh, but you got to really compartmentalize when you're, when you're playing and you're in the middle of a season and you're going through that week to week preparation and those real big games. You know, I, I, I think back to like playing in, in the preseason with the Cardinals, my first action as an NFL player. And I was freaking out. My God, I'm in the NFL. These guys are. And then I stopped and I was like, this team's from LA. So it's just the USC Trojans wearing silver and black. It's still football. It's just ball. They're faster. They're better. I'm here for a reason. If they thought I wasn't good enough, I wouldn't be here. So I kind of had to mentally just shift to like, I'm good. I'm going to be all right here. I can make this happen. And if I have a bad play, that's okay. I'll have more good plays than bad. So you have to just tell yourself mentally to chill out and, and trust your preparation, really trust that you're skilled enough and then trust your teammates, man. Like during the week, it was so big to me during big games to try to keep them loose, to try to keep them working their asses off. And then to try to make sure that you know, when we were working, it was full on, but then we would have fun. It was time to have a little fun. You know, we did the work. Let's have fun in the locker room and laugh and not be tight because tightness just takes your energy away and it doesn't allow you to focus and play how you really can. So that was how I tried to approach it. Um, you know, that, you know, there was no secret sauce or secret thing I went through. I mean, later in my career, when it got crazy, I did this tapping exercise where, you know, you tap on certain points that would or trigger points to help calm you, which is just a way to meditate or breathe or visualize. And so I did some of that just because it would help me take my focus off of not, not letting my teammates down or not being prepared enough or not, you know, going out and performing to my level that I, that I expected. It kind of takes you away from that. And you're, you're worried about tapping on all the spots and you kind of lose your mind for a second and it's good. And I try to, you know, tell kids that and, and talk a lot about that. It's okay not think football 24 7 it's actually good for you to not think football for a little bit even during the season and even on the way to the game you know like it's okay to just shut it out and be like oh wow look at the birds I'm listening to some chill music i'm gonna go have some fun doing something i love okay i like that i like the tapping uh mine when it's a big game is i, I have pins and i kind of i click my pin oh, yeah. that, oh, that's, no. that's my little <laughs> habit and for some uh, reason, I'm always thinking about the uh, gold knot scene where that guy just keeps doing his pin over and over again. But I like that. Yeah, um, 
We're going to come back to preparation because you have a neat little thing that you do that you have with preparation. Uh, first off, I wanted to ask though, 22 tackles as a free safety in high school. No, no linebacker. It was linebacker. linebacker. Okay. And it was, it was, it was optimus football optimus. Like I'm talking fifth, sixth grade. Right. So I was a beast on the, on the recess field with just tennis shoes and jeans. Right. They put pads and a helmet on me and I was just, I just had a knack for finding the ball and making tackles. So, yeah, I was – I loved playing defense. In fact, I was probably a better defensive player than I was a quarterback. But, you know, playing I don't, QB, I don't believe I had a that, arm. but I was going to ask. I was going to ask. Okay. Uh, now, my I, – I, I'm thinking, what was the biggest jump, like the, the biggest – oh, crap. Was it going from high school to college or college to the NFL? Definitely college to the to NFL. Um you know, I mean, the jump from high school to college is, is intensified because now you're on your own. You don't have a mom there or brothers or siblings or a grandma across the street that can feed you when you're hungry at, you know, six o'clock at night, like I had growing up. So you have to learn time management. You have to learn, you know, life skills, how to handle getting groceries, making sure you got food, you know, taking care of your study time, getting rest, all that stuff on your own. So that was more of a challenge as a, as a freshman going away from home, that side of thing, but football wise, just pure game and like competing and the players you were playing against the NFL was intense, man. It was like, I could put it this way. There were times in college where I would make a bad throw on a post route and maybe the safety was over the top and it would go just out of his fingertips. And it was like, Oh, okay. Incomplete. Cool. We get another down and we get to punt in the NFL. That was Ed Reed hawking that ball, getting it. And then now I'm dodging some badass dudes that want to hurt me now because they can block me. Yes. So that was the difference. Like an errant throw in college, you know, against certain opponents was you get paid. You know, I remember, you know, a lot of guys in college played against some badass players in college. And, uh, you know, the pros though, it's like every one of them is that badass on college, that college team. So your margin for error was just way less. Um, another time it really stuck out from uh, college to the pros, my first time in the pocket where I moved up and I made a guy that was free around the edge, I made him miss. And I was like, okay, good. Now I could throw it. Boom. My arm got ripped off, ball fumble. He just, that dude that I made miss, he's feeding his family. He scrapped up to the ground, off the ground and ripped my arm off. Where in college, it wasn't quite like that, right? It wasn't as intense. So huge jump from the college to the pros. but. Again, I, I, I went into my, my, hey, this is just USC we're playing. They're wearing weird jerseys. Like, it's still football. I just have to up my abilities and raise my game and those around me, and I think I'll be all right. So that's kind of how I pulled it all off. Okay, was that, was that your trick, always envisioning the opponent as a USC? At, just at first, and then it was like, <laughs> okay, I can actually make a basic cross throw. Wow, I threw an out route. This is cool. Oh, I made that all pro miss me okay, I can play at this level. I can do this. And then maybe not perfect all the time, but at least I, I'm good enough to be here. It just helped me get over that first little uh, anxiety-ridden hurdle of like, holy smokes, I'm in the NFL now. Am I supposed to be here? <laughs> so how, how long did that take? Like, was it a couple of weeks? Was it a whole season, your rookie year? Was it a little bit longer? Yeah, it was my whole season, really. I mean, learning how, how one to prepare uh, and deal with being a pro now where you, you know, you're not, your hand's not being held. They're telling you when meetings are, you got to be there, you know, so you got to grow up again and become uh, more of a professional. And so for me, the game was always a game, but now it was a business and it was your job and you're being paid for it. And I was like, I want to play this game for free forever, but now they want to pay me. This is cool. So it was just a different way to approach, uh, you know, you know, that, that level was, you know, be prepared and do everything you can to, to get ready for that opportunity. And it came middle of the season, my rookie year. I wasn't ready, but I mean, when, when are you ready to go out there and start reading cover two, man, cover two, quarter, quarter halves, cover eight, you know, when, you, when is it time? It's time to get out there and do it. And I wasn't put through this a whole lot. I mean, I learned ball in, in college at a high level, but not quite NFL level. So it was a big learning experience for me, my rookie year. Uh, but, but it was fun to be able to like, oh, wow, okay, I can throw for some yards in this league. I can make some plays. Guys don't know how to uh, react to a guy that, that you got to, you know, it's hard to get you. It's hard to get me. It was yeah. hard to tackle me. I was it able was, to make yeah. guys miss. So that was what was fun for me, that first little bit of being a rookie 
oh man, I'd roll, I'd, they'd, they DBs would stop and they thought the play was over, but I was out in the pocket and all of a sudden Frank Sanders is going deep and I'm winging haymakers, making tons of plays. And that was a, a lot of fun. The hardest part was when they adapted to that and said, now don't come off your guy, make him make that tough decision to throw the ball away. And that was where I really had a tough time. I didn't like throwing the ball away. I was like, got the ball in my hand. I'm supposed to make a play. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay. Uh, they must not have studied up on you and not known your nickname for all yeah. that. <laughs> but uh, coaches, if you're just joining me, welcome. Uh, I am here with Jake Plummer. We are talking football leadership uh, quarterback play, and he's got something he wants to talk to us later on. If you like this, if it sounds good, if if you're just enjoying this, please give us a thumbs up. And then down below, there's a share. Click that share, and let's get some more coaches in here, man. Because this is uh, I'm I am freaking thrilled. Now we have we have coaches in here, and they asked one of the questions that keeps uh, coming up in the chat is how do you earn the respect of your teammate as a quarterback? Like how do you go in there and be like, hey, I'm the quarterback. This is what we're gonna do. I'm a leader. Follow me. Well, for me, it's just one, there's only one way to do that when it comes to football and that's getting out. And as a quarterback, especially is, you know, you can talk, you can run, lift, do everything, but when the ball snapped and it's in your hand and what do you do with it? Uh, that's really where you earn your respect. And it's not necessarily the first quarter, second quarter, usually it's the fourth quarter when, you know, times are tight and they won't, and you, and your teammates can see and sense and feel your power and your belief and your strength come out instead of being afraid of that moment, you embrace it. In fact, you challenge everyone around you by saying, yo, you're going to rise up right now with me. Or are we going to lose this, this game? You know, like it's a, it's a, not a false bravado, but it's a confidence that you, you have to have, you can't fake it. And whether you believe it or not, you've got to wholeheartedly go into it with that, that that ability to, to say we're going to make this happen and then that's when I believe that respect is earned for me you know I had a lot of that my whole career because I was a little undersized as far as being skinny and 6'2 and kind of different and came from Boise Idaho and you know it was, wasn't your typical you know four-star recruit quarterback that everyone wanted you know and talked about until I could prove I could play there you know that was that was the knock on me but my rookie year when I got in against Philadelphia at half, um, we got the ball on the two yard line in the old vet stadium and it was loud. And when I stepped into the huddle, I, I figured this is my chance to take these reins. This is my chance to do what I've always dreamed of doing is leading the team to a Super Bowl. So I stepped in that huddle and I looked everyone in the eye and there was Lomas Brown, Larry Sinners, I mean, Rob Moore. I mean, there were some badass football players in this huddle. And I basically just called them out and said, all right, who's with me? We're going to take this, you know what, 98 yards right now. I said, let's go. And I, I, I didn't know we would, but I, had, I believed that we could. And I believed that I had to say that and believe it 100%. So they knew like, what the hell? Okay. Like, if you don't believe that, get out of my huddle. And I just called them out. And what did we do? We went 98 yards and scored. Now, was that just me? No, that was me getting those other 10 guys to go. Ooh, all right. Cause the guy before me, no knock on him. He didn't have that, but I came in there with the confidence that I don't know. My brothers helped it, helped me build that and Bruce Snyder and along the way, just coaches and great teammates. But that's what you got to do is you step in, in a moment. And if you say something like that, it's words, but if you put action behind it, then you earn respect. And that doesn't happen just, you know, I mean, it happens on the field is where you really, really earn the respect of everybody, your teammates. Then you keep, earning that respect by all sorts of things, standing in the pocket and getting hit hard when it's third and 10 and you got to wait and you see that safety, but you stand there and hold it and hold it. And then you throw and take it hard in the ribs. Those linebackers that get hit every play, they see that and go, all right, I, I got this dude's it's my guy. He's tough. That's how you earn that by showing courage too. So a lot of things you can do as a QB besides speaking and, and being loud, loud and big mouth uh, to go out there and earn respect. But ultimately it comes down to, when you got the ball in your hands, do you make it happen or not? That's the real true respect you earn. Okay. Is, I guess, is there a way that it's coaches can, are there drills that you've gone through that have kind of built that up? Even if you, I know you have to have a little bit of it, but let's say I have a young quarterback. He really doesn't have that yet. Are there certain things I can do to build him up so that when his time comes like yours did, he will act just like you? You know, it's hard. It's, I, I, it's a great question. Um, 
And, you know, some of the things we've been doing, having clinics, speaking, mindship, leadership, and all this is, is, you know, believing in yourself, being true to yourself and not trying to be someone you're not, or maybe play like somebody you're not able to play like, you know, know your skill set, hone your skill set, and then just be real authentic and genuine as you approach the game. And if you can do that, then I think you're okay with the fact that at some point, if you choose to be a quarterback, it's going to get real and you're going to be looked at all eyes on you all the time, no matter what they're going to be watching how you react. So, you know, when you get that chance, if, if, if you, you know, you make the choice to either go for it and, and take what you get from winning or losing and being okay with it and having to be able to show everybody, whether you win or lose that you don't change, you're still the same guy and you're going to keep going at it. Now to build that confidence up. I don't know. I had two older brothers that, you know, they beat me up, not like beat me up, but they, they weren't easy on me, you know, and they, they let me play, but they weren't going to throw me underhand pitches. It was like, yo, if you're going to play baseball, they pitch overhand. We're not going to throw you underhand. It's coming from here and it's coming fast. Learn how to hit it or cry if you want Get to. Get out of the way. That's what they said. So I'll be over crying because I got the ball. So this didn't happen just, you know, once I got to the league, it's a long process of being able to accept failure and go, I don't like the way that feels. What do I need to do to, to not do that is just keep trying. So if your QB wants to, to get to that point where he can have that opportunity, they have to believe in themselves and the guys around them, especially. And then they just got to keep trying and keep being ready to get knocked down and jump back up and not show any like self pity or fear. You just got to act like it didn't happen and move on. And God, if you can do that, then good things will really happen. Okay let's say I'm a young coach and I want to show leadership with my players, but I really don't know how to do it. I know you've been around a lot and you've had a lot of different coaches or whatever thing. What are some, some traits that stuck out to you that you think young coaches or just coaches in general should emulate so they can lead, especially. The yeah, climate? I think it's a, it's an interesting climate because, you know, kids are distracted by so much nowadays. I mean, we were back then we were, back without phones too <laughs> in fact it probably was even more distracting because you'd actually you'd be gone from home out chasing around with your friends doing fun stuff instead of just on there talking to everybody from your bedroom um but you know you gotta you gotta as a, I think as a coach the ones that have been real transformative for me and helped me become who I who I was playing and who I am now they allowed me to be myself now they would guide me and show me like times hey when I was doing something wrong, not, you know, point it out, let me know. But they also let me have my own personality, my <laughs> passion, and they let me be myself and they let, helped guide me. Um, but they allowed me and, and those around me too, to, to kind of be who we were, to be a team first. And then they would coach us. And you can't really force that. Like a team has to be tight. I think for a coach to be able to coach them, you know, it's, it's very hard for a coach to come, demand a team like each other you got to find a way to do that as a player I mean you got to bond with your teammates and that comes with working hard and having fun and you know that's what I always try to do so coaches you know don't forget like the team's working hard like the seventh straight day of working hard is great when you're a coach because that's just your DNA <laughs> the same pool the same sperm pool you know like yeah, work harder work do. more work harder work more but remember sometimes that nugget you can throw them, whether it's a cooler full of popsicles at the end of practice or even just halfway through practice, say, hey, take your stuff off. We're going to have the sprinklers on. We're going to have some fun. What? Like that makes kids love what they're working for. And it's not going to make you lose the state championship. You know, like 30 more minutes of practice, of course, in a coach's mind is like the end of the world if you miss it. But for those players, you know, it's like, and I've always had coaches that were like that. They had a good thumb on how we felt. It made us work, but also it could have been, you know, me as a leader and other guys that I had with me that were tone setters. We worked our asses off when it was time. Any team I was on, it wasn't right if you weren't working your ass off. And, uh, you know, so coaches would reward us more. And, you know, when you talk sports and football and wanting to be good at anything, it takes a lot of hard work. So if you don't have players that work hard as a coach, then, you know, you've got to find a way to show them how. Uh, and it's not just by, you know, pushing weights and sleds and all that, but make it challenge. I mean, everybody loves a challenge and everybody loves to compete. So find ways to break that, the, the normal mold of doing things that coaches have, have done for years and, and have, have a fun competition, you know, who can slide the longest 
on their feet on this slip and slide after practice, you know, like that builds competition, that builds camaraderie, that builds your team then goes, God, Coach Mackey's a cool coach, man. He, he realized we worked our ass off. He let us have some fun. That was awesome. I can't wait for tomorrow's practice. Instead of dog cussing them and leaving them out there working their ass off and not telling them good job, now they're like, ugh, I got to like practice. You know, there's, I just feel like I was lucky. I had coaches that really worked us hard when we had to, but they let us have moments where we could appreciate the work we'd put in. Okay, I'm just going to let you know I'm going to clip that little part that you said that uh, Coach Mackey's a cool coach. You know, and I'm just going to, I'm going to post that everywhere on social media. So thank you for that that. soundbite. I appreciate it. I I like the competition, you know, in in the not football drills. What are your thoughts on having competition actually in practice? Like if I have drills, instead of just going through air or through the motions with a, let's say your position coach, you're going against the defense or something like that. Did that help you out in college and in the NFL actually doing drills with competition or did you like more like I'm going to the bags or I'm just running and throwing and nothing like that? You know, the, the drills that I hated the most were just drills where there was no competition. You know, it's like, ah, it's just stuff you had to do. But those were the, you know, we call it TNA, which is, you know, handing off to the running backs, you know, set hut and you hand the ball off and you finish your boot out. I mean, that's boring, repetitive, redundant stuff, but it builds good habits it, get, it, it prepares you for the game when you have to do it. And, it. and then, like I said, it builds good habits. But competing, though, I mean, here's, a, here's an example. I'll give you two. When I was a, rook, or a sophomore pulled up to varsity uh, at Capitol High in Boise, Idaho, and I wasn't pulled up because I was good. I was pulled up because our sophomore team sucked, and the coach on varsity didn't want me to quit playing football because I was getting you were my good. ass kicked. And I was getting my ass kicked, and he saw some talent. So he said, come up to varsity. I thought, yeah, I'm on varsity. I didn't play. Okay. I didn't play quarterback much at all. I played receiver though, because I wanted to get on the field. I didn't give, I didn't give a rat's ass. I wanted to play. So in practice, I'm running scout receiver and the, the, the DBs I'm torching them. I mean, all of a sudden now practice, I'm, I'm killing these guys and I'm not a receiver. I've never played. I mean, I've played all, all the time with my brothers, you know, in the yard, but I was just competing and they didn't like it. They called me a brown nose and you know, you're kissing ass this, that, and the other. I said, okay. Practice fine. player. Or you can't stop hero. me. Then, yeah. yeah. You can't stop me. Good luck this week. When we play the all state guy, you're going to, you're going to have a, a tough time there. So, you know, that, that's the kind of thing I did with, you know, coming in and, and competing in a drill like that when sometimes guys would, wouldn't, you know, or a sophomore would have bowed down to the senior and be like, Oh, okay. But I was like, no, you're, you're can't stop me. I'm going to take your job so we can win some games. You know, I like push the guys in, ahead of you and not be scared, like, fearful, like play with the warrior's heart, you know, not be fearful of anything. Um, then drills like one-on-one drills were one of my favorite things in the NFL. Cause you know, I got to go against Aeneas Williams and throw routes on air against Aeneas Williams when he's trying to cover. This is like going back to, to the park with me, you and Chad, and now you're running routes and Chad's guarding you and I'm quarterback. And then we rotate and now I'm just on the run. I mean, that, that's what we did growing up when you didn't, couldn't feel the team. So on my way over there, and especially in Denver too, and Champ Bailey was here and, we had some good players, right? Good DBs. And on the way over after getting a drink of water, there wasn't a day I didn't go by those DBs and, and make sure that I'm going to get the best from them by saying a few choice things like, all right, you guys ready today? We're going to torch your asses. You guys can't cover shit. And they'd say, what snake? I'm like, yeah, come on. You know, you're going to torch your ass. You ain't going to get it. You're, you're gonna, you guys ready receivers? Let's whoop their ass. And they'd get fired up. And then if you did beat him, I'd make sure to say that. And then it pisses them off. Now I'm getting there 100%. Man, I'm going to let that guy, they can't beat me again. Now I just up the level of practice by just calling them out because that's just having a, a pulse of your team, right? So competing in drills, I hated when I'd be live. I didn't want to get tackled in practice. Please don't hurt me in practice. This is stupid to get hurt in practice. Guys that have to hit, you got to hit. You got to hit sometimes. You got to tackle. You got to know how why lay a hand on your quarterback if he's your exactly. guy that can take you there? Let him get hit in the game. You don't need to practice getting hit. You'll be okay. So, you know, for me, it was the competition of, you know, where I could beat the guy across from me and make them play harder in practice. And then, you know, any competition, you're going to raise that level. It's just another way to up the learning and up the, 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 the pulse and up everybody's passion when you, when you start making it competitive. I would do the same thing in, in even cone drills. So I'm running cone drills, working out like we're running cone drills just for time in the off season. 
I'm going to go as fast as I can at the start of this so that no one's going to dog it through the whole thing and go 80%. Like we're here, let's work 100%, right? Let's get the work in and get out of here. So I'd always go hard and fast in every drill just because we're running one tens. I'm going to run as fast as I can so that if this four to four DB that should be beating me in the one hundred in the, in the one tens, now I'm beating him. Now who's dogging? Everyone can tell. I don't have to say anything. He knows he's dogging because I'm beating him in the sprint. So that kind of competition was always something I love to do too, was just through those little quiet ways, be the tone setter always. I like that because that's, that's a nonverbal way of being a leader on your team. And that could help kids, especially the kids I teach and the coaches teach in, in the chat that aren't very verbal, that aren't like that confrontational as you. Not, not, not many of us can, can talk junk to Champ Bailey like that every single well, day. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, it comes with the respect <laughs> that you earn from playing, though. You know, you ask me about how you earn respect. Well, you do it on the field during Sundays, and then you can talk a little smack once in a while. But, yeah, you know, going hard. If it means something to you, you're not going to come out and run, get through, just get through it. You know, going through the motions was something I really was, it was incapable of doing. I found myself in practice getting so hot sometimes, like I felt like I was in a game that I get in fights with my teammates because kind of like, and I don't want to jump right on to him as my teammates. He's so famous with Pat Tillman. Pat would lay dudes out in practice when they come across the middle, he would hit them and they did not like that. But that was just Pat. He got lost in in the moment, not going, oh, this is just practice, half, half practice. Nah, man, he just went one speed. And so don't be afraid to go your speed all the time it's just going to make people around you better i like that so how, how many fights would you say you you instigated you started in your career oh i don't know i mean i in know, practice <laughs> just in practice just in practice not not that many but there was a few at asu and uh you know a couple uh, you know i i wouldn't go in fighting and scrap yeah yeah, yeah. No, no no i'm talking about the track because i i well, yeah. we've been there even coaches do it sometimes you know it's like 11 on 11 defensive coaches are talking junk to offensive coaches yeah. and everything you know that it's hot like you said especially in south carolina and it's human and we just start jawing i'm just curious how because I've, I've never, as you can tell, look at me, uh, never been in the NFL. So I don't know how those things go. I was just curious how much trash talking actually happens at practice. It, it happens a lot. I mean, you're on edge, especially in camp, you know, when you're just hitting the same guy over and over and you've been spending all the time with him in the off season and get chippy, you know, you get tired of that and someone's having a rough day or just got chewed out by their coach, you know, I mean, then you, t- you t- hit the wrong trigger or the right trigger sometimes to, uh, to just raise the level. I mean, we've had some fights that turned into some of the greatest practices ever because now all of a sudden there's fire burning, there's passion flow and blood's pumping. And now we're getting better because I'm trying to whoop your ass, even though we're in the same uniform, but we're, we're, we're making each other better by going so hard that it's almost game like, and uh, it's hard to get there now. I mean, I, I haven't coached a lot in this environment when you're with the limitations on contact and how much you compete and this, that, and the other, but, Somehow, some way, you know, if you got that fire on your team, it's, it, you know, coaches will punish people for fighting. But I think it's like, yeah, you should say, no, that's not good. But I know in the coaches' room, they're all like, ah, oh, yes, our team got some passion. These guys, it means something to you. If someone attacks you, you got to fight back. And then that shows them too, like, I'll be right beside you when we get attacked and we need to stand together. Like, that's just how you build that bond. All right. So the passion's got, how do you then, like, in the locker room. That's something I always worry about. I I love the passion and everything, but then after practice is over with, you know, they go to the locker room and sometimes they want to escalate it even, even more. Now, if I'm the leader the quarterback and everything, what can I do or help defuse that situation? That's not my job, man. That's, that's a coach's (laughs) job. I got you. Coaches got to handle that situation before we go in the locker room. And if it ain't cool, then you got to make sure you, you got team, a team that has a pulse. You got to have leaders that, that are aware of what's going on and, if, you know, ha- have guys like Rod Smith that would be able to, to you know, take that situation and de-escalate it, to bring it down and not let a, a guy come into the locker room hot and then walk right by the dude that, you know, they got in the scrap and then all of a sudden now, you know, they're fighting and now guys are coming out of the shower and there's, you know, all this mayhem and it's like, you can't have that in a locker room. But there were times, there were, there were plenty of times, I mean, nothing horrible. But there were times when, you know, guys were upset and, and that's, that's just part of it. I mean, all these 55 men together, uh, all fighting and all that testosterone and all that mixes up sometimes to be, you know, a fight or 
someone boil someone's passion and and their uh you know temper boils over and and then you get it out and i know this for sure that any time that i ever had any of those moments they were followed up with a uh you know a talk a hug and love because you know it was just a moment we got overcome with passion and you realize when you get fight, fights of guys uh i loved it because then i knew right away all right he's just like i am he ain't gonna take they take anything from anybody and whether he thinks he's going to get his ass kicked by that huge D lineman or not, he's going to go after him like a badger and fight. And I know I can count on him on Friday nights or Saturdays or Sundays. And I love, I kind of like that when I'd see guys get after it. Cause it's like, Hey, yeah, you got, you're scrappy. You this means something to you. All right. Well, we have a question in the chat. Uh, Coach Nick wants to know, how do you keep composure in big games and how did you handle the Nebraska game in 97 or 96? Um, yeah, good question. You know, keeping composure in games, it, it's tough sometimes, especially in the NFL. Um, I didn't keep my composure real well a few times. Uh, you know, like the, the, you could hear the crowd and even the, the tough ones were, were at home when you got a crowd at home that wasn't pleased with your effort, even though in your heart, you knew you were going hundred percent and just things weren't happening. Like it sucks to play the number one defense in the NFL. Sometimes they have a good game plan and they're shutting you down. It's hard. It's frustrating. And then to hear the crowd and the fans that are drinking beers, eating pretzels and all that, that's the worst time when I would lose my composure a couple of times where I let, you know, those emotions take over. But otherwise to keep it in a game, to keep yourself focused, it's just, you know, you got to, you got, you got to be in it. You got to play with the warrior's heart and know that it's, it's for the four quarters, you know, whether you have a bad first half or a good one or whatever, you still got to go out and make that next play. Um, you know, my senior year, the Nebraska game, that was a really, crazy crazy game for us it put us on the map but the year before we got whooped down in Lincoln and our defense was scared before the game I could tell they were scared they were not focused and we got we put up 28 points on them as an offense so we knew we could we could this defense wasn't unformidable we could beat them but our defense was not stopping them so that was fun man the night before that game we caught we took took the coaches and asked them to leave the room and had a players only meeting because we in that room as players, we had a sense and a feeling, and this was voiced amongst many of us, not just one or two, that we were the only ones that thought we could win that game. The actual guys that were going to go onto that field and suit up, we felt like we were the only ones that truly believed we had a chance. We felt like even some of our coaches were already looking the next week thinking, yeah, this ain't going to happen. Now, when that happens, you can either go along with that or you can do what we did. And we said, coaches, can you leave? And they got out of there and then we got real. And we talked about it and we got real, real. And like there was some stuff thrown around and dudes saying things and we wanted to go that night. But we had to bottle that and go to the stadium the next day, drive into that stadium the next day. Uh, you know, I didn't keep my composure well. There was a sea of red crossing the bridge on, Mill on, uh, on rural going to the stadium. And I'm thinking, what the hell is this? Where's our fans? It's all red. And it, it, it fired us up. So you're comp I had, we had to keep our composure, obviously, and focus, but it's okay to lose it sometimes to build that up. But you got to remember when it's time to come back, when the ball snapped or when that series starts, you got to find that calm. You got to find the ability to, to channel it back into, you know, the actions you need to take. And uh, yeah, keeping your composure is huge. And I, like I said, I wasn't always great. I'd throw my helmet or I'd get in a cussing match with a player or a coach or whatever. But those are just the times of passions when you know, you know, <laughs> you know, you can do better. The worst thing is to go sit on the bench and go, you know, make sure your hair's okay and put your hat on and sit there and drink Gatorade like nothing's happening. Like, I want to see a guy that you can tell is upset at the way he's playing, that it means something to him, and that he wants to win badly. And that's what I always tried to portray and, you know, emote to my team, even when we were getting our butts kicked with the Cardinals. You know, I was like, guys, this ain't over. Let's go. And that's what led to some of the most amazing comebacks that we've ever had was just me not giving up. And that's why I always I believe the QB mindset is so huge. He's got to believe he's got to stay focused. He's got to transmit that positive thought that we will win no matter what the situation, because if you lose him, you know, those eyes that are watching him, the rest of them are gone, too. All right. I want to touch on uh, how you prepared, because I know you went to different places and everything like that. And as a quarterback, you've got to. You've got to prepare for all your teams. But we have someone in chat. Uh, Jeff Johnson says, hey, Jake, I attended and played football at Capitol High School in Boise. Went to your yeah. camps growing up. Just wanted to say thanks for everything you did for Capitol High School and our community. I just wanted to share all that. All right. Go Eagles. Sweet. All right. 
So h- how did you start preparing? Like how difficult is it to go from one offense to another and learn it as fast as possible? Like what mindset do you have to have to wrap your head around the different offenses in the NFL and going from college yeah. to the NFL? It, it takes a lot. You know, it's uh, for me, I didn't have a photographic memory. I didn't have the, you know, I had to study really hard. I had to study a lot. I'd draw a lot of plays, draw a lot of formations. I had to do it by hand because I was a tactile learner and I liked to visualize it and then go watch it and then rep- repetitive learning and all of that. You know, like it was tough, but it's just what you got to do. You know, knowing that you're the guy, you got to know everything because when you're in the huddle and that receiver that's a freshman or a rookie says, hey, uh, what do I got here? You have to be able to tell him like that because – they're expecting that all eyes on you and they need the answers from you too. So for me, it was just, uh, you know, trusting my coaches, what they were giving me, trying to take really good notes and then just spend as much time as I could making sure that, you know, one, I didn't worry about footwork or technique because I spent time honing that in the off season and I always worked on that in practice. So that was second nature. That became a, uh, that became a, a, an afterthought to know what's my three-step, five-step, seven-step, three big, two quick, you know, whatever. That stuff has to become just thoughtless. And that comes with that those, uh, you know, redundant repetitions that aren't fun. That that no kid wants to do, but you got to do them. That's what helps you then prepare for offense, to learn the offense, to study a defense. Now you've cut out one thought of what are my foot, what's my footwork here. I got that down. Now I can go into what's my read. What's the – formation the protection am I protected do I have to re- be ready to slide protection backside and then if I do that do we move the, ra- the route combo over here you know like there's just so much you got to know and the only way to do that is just to dive in 100 and make sure you're studying and preparing and uh you know we as as, as back when I played there was basically just you know video that was a- you know, dvd pen to paper and and a playbook you know the big three ring binder about this thick so um, you know, that's where we've, we've come. You've mentioned, you know, my, my logo here, Ready List Sports is what I've been working on with uh, my, my business partner, Chad Friedhoff. He's the one who came up with the thought behind using multiple learning styles to help players learn the game more efficiently so that you're not wasting time studying the same plays that you know already. Instead, you're focusing on the plays that you need the reps on, that you aren't quick getting the answer or progression as quick as you need. So we've come up with a pretty diverse tool to help with the preparation that now is being demanded, not just of, you know, an NFL player, but the trickle down of the Peyton Manning effect, I call it, has gone all the way down into Pop Warner where kids are standing there in pistol and the guy's going to either take the top off of it if the the safety sits or he's going to run a hook if the safety's deep. Like, what? I struggled to see that when I was senior in college. Now these 12-year-olds are being asked to do this, but there's some, some new coach who's just a dad who said, I'll coach. Now he's trying to coach him to do this. Like, we're teaching the game wrong. If you can't give them a tool to use to actually understand that, then you need to simplify it back and let it, let it be football in its purest form and let them play and let them progress to that level whenever the time is or provide them the tool to help them so you can teach them the game and raise that IQ. So, yeah, what we've created, I you know, would have loved to have had, but uh, at this stage it's now just hope, helping you know, spread the word, coaches like yourself, that can can see something of value and then help spread the word to other coaches and uh, hopefully we can provide something that helps. Yeah, could you go ahead and show us show us that uh, tool? Yeah, yeah, I think Chad is is here to to share a screen and uh, you know what we've been doing uh, so far has just been kind of talking through some football to show you guys what we feel is an amazing part of it. Uh, here you see, you know, it's a it's a web based interactive playbook app that you know coaches can use. Uh, it's preloaded with plays. It's got formations and route combos and, and route trees drawn up in it already. You know, football is all the same across the board, pretty much. No one's running something that, that is, is all of a sudden revolutionary. Uh, but it's all called something different. Um, you know, a few of my favorite plays, if you don't mind, I'll talk a couple of my no, favorite plays. No, I would, plays I would love Chad's. to know what your favorite play is. Yeah, I'm going to grab my phone charger real quick as Chad's getting set up. Um, as, as a – as a fanboy and coaches, if you want to learn more about this, I am going to drop the link in chat. It'll also be in the description when this is over with. So the link is in chat right there. Good old Hank. 
<laughs> yes. So here, this play, 22 Hank, I was probably 80% in my career here. And uh, as, as Chad's drawn, I'm going to talk you through it. So you got double wing right, 22 scat Hank. Hank is a, you know, West Coast concept that when you say Hank, it means something. Whether you're the X, the Z, the F, the H, or flipped or motion to it, outside has curl routes. They could be called in routes. They could be called hook routes. They could be called Hank routes, whatever. There's all this nomenclature, but it's the same thing, 12 back to 10. 12 back to the quarterback, I like to say. Don't stop coming back to me. You got your tight end who's going to run, or your F that's going to run a flat route and keep going, and your Y is going to go sit over the ball at about six and kind of work back towards the QB, and your H is going to be on a swing route, which could be called a check wide. It could be called a, a numerous different things. Um, as you see, we've got routes drawn that you can choose from, or you can just use the stylus and draw your own route. Uh, so as Chad goes in, he's putting the progression on here. You know, you're going to read the backer. If he, if he drops out of there, you're going to hit your tight end with a nice high release five-step drop ball with a hitch over the ball. If not, you're going to go to your in away from whatever the safety, however the safeties rotate. So if this free safety comes down over the F, you're going to work strong side to the Z, to the, to the swing. If you, uh, the opposite happens, the strong safety comes down, you're going to work Y to the X to the F. This play was huge in Arizona when we made it to the playoffs in 98. Um, Chad's going to keep toying around here and show you how quick you can make uh, quick little additions or route adjustments or whatever it is. Um, we've, we've really revolutionized this playbook drawing tool and no one's approached this yet, but we've, we've done it. So coaches trust that we're going to save you, not hours, but we're going to save you days on oh, developing wow. and drawing plays. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty slick. So back to the Hank route, right? So we're, we're about to, we're about to make it to the playoffs. We just came back. It's been a crazy season. We've won three games from come, come from behind. This is San Diego. We got to win. We return the ball. We're getting into field goal range. We need 10 yards. We got a timeout. There's hardly any time left. I go to the sideline and Mark Tressman's going, looking at his big call sheet, flipping it over. And he's like kind of panicking. And it's like, what are we calling? What are we calling? And he's looking at me. And I said, coach, let's call Hank. Just call Hank. And I took off running. He calls Hank. I go to the head ump and I told him, we're going to run. I'm going to drop back, throw the ball to Frank Sanders. He's going to take a knee. I'm going to call timeout. And we're going to kick a field goal to win. He looked at me kind of crazy. I stepped in the huddle and said the same thing with a few more choice words, as you probably understand my, my style, yes. to let them know, hey, this is it, right? Well, that's what I felt as, as when I look back on my career in leadership. That was transmitting nothing but the true 100% belief that it was going to happen. And if you didn't believe it, you know, you can't be here right now. But this is what we're doing, guys. I'm going to throw it to Frank, call timeout. We're going to, you know, we're going to kick a field goal, win this mofo. And that's what I told my huddle. And we did just that. Frank catches it, takes a knee, timeout. Chris Jackie kicks a field goal to win it. We ran Hank to get to that spot. In the history of the Arizona Cardinals, it's a really important call because there's a vote that kept them in the Valley. Probably would it be the LA Cardinals if we hadn't made this play right here, I think, uh, at the time we did it. So great football play. You can do some fun stuff with it. You can run F on a wheel. You know, there's different things you can do. Turn, make Y go, sit, and then come out of it. A lot of different stuff. So that's that play. And then I got to speak and touch on my favorite thing to do, which was rolling. Up. Um, I tell coaches all the time and little young quarterbacks and their parents, what's the best thing for my son to practice on right now? I say, how old is he? He's 10. Teach him to throw on the run because you're going to be running until you get to college where there could be a decent line. And even then you're going to be running. So teach him to throw on the run. Everyone can throw standing still. <laughs> so here we go. We got a strong right slot formation out of just your basic two – one tight end, two receiver, two running back. I loved run, running downhill zone runs. When we got to, to Denver, it was amazing, the boot game. So one thing about the boot game is that you got to have the run game. It doesn't have to be gashing people, but you just have to have it established. You have had to make an effort to run the ball. If you've done that and been able to succeed in reaching your guys and showing that you can run it a little bit, it's time to call some boots. So same thing. you got to do the TNA and the repetitions during practice that are boring as hell where you fake the handoff and you carry out the fake and you run out with the ball or when you hand the ball off, you carry out your fake as a quarterback. Coaches demand that your QB carries out his fake at least seven or eight steps. One, it'll help him condition. Two, players will see him working extra hard instead of just standing back there. And three, it won't be a bad habit that you have to break when you, when you finally analyze film and go, oh, we're not booting out. 
he's not booting out on the runs. And then when he's booting out, he's running real hard. It's a dead giveaway. So practice that consistent habit and you'll watch your boot game go crazy. Got a hard sell with the line. They got to reach. You got a downhill with everybody. The Y's got even jab. Looked like he's going to, to reach that guy. And then you got to, whatever concept you want on the backside. I love coming out of the backside because you're naked. You don't have anybody blocking for you. It's you versus a defensive end. And if he doesn't bite, then you got your F slipping through here for your throwaway. But as you get outside of the pocket quarterbacks, take a peek out of the right side of your eyes, your peripheral, to see if that D end hesitated and bit on the run or if he's coming after you because you got to pop your hips and shoulders and throw the ball away and not take a loss. So you come out of the after the fake. My key on the fake is make a good fake and then you run your you run as fast as you possibly can without slipping, of course, under control, but you get out of there. You run hard till you're outside the tackle box. And then it's like, oh, all right, relax and go through your read. This read, I would tell you, is like a smash route or a circus route, whatever you want to call it. Those guys, X and Z, have to go down hard like they're trying to stock block and get in front of their defender. That Z turns it up and takes it high on the corner route. Always stay high corner. Let me flatten you. Uh, or the circus route, let me flatten you to the, to the sideline. And the whip route is a down like you're blocking. And then and the timing on this has to be key. It can't be too early because then he's out there wondering why I didn't throw it to him. Well, make sure that he sells that run and then comes out of it when I've actually made the fake and come out myself. So X is number one, Z is number two, three on the deep over. And your F is a nice little throwaway. I'll, I will say this, I definitely took my time to throw that circus route if he was open any time because that was one of my favorite. Rolling to the left, whipping it kind of sidearmed out to that circus. Uh, but booting out, I still love it, man, throwing on the run. And here's a, here's a coaching point for you coaches. If your kid struggles throwing on the run, then take the football out of his hand, give him a racquetball or a tennis ball or, or something else and just have him run and throw it at something. Just run, stay running and throw this at something and then give them the football. It's kind of hard when you got a football and you're trying to spiral it and be accurate. Just teach them to be able to run and throw while they're running and then move into that football side of things. And I think you'll see some good results. Okay. I like that. I like that boot the, out. Yeah. That's it for our plays there. That's strong right slot, fake 34, naked left circus. And as you see, Chad, you know, is waiting for me for the next play. we got a pretty slick drawing tool and, uh, you know, I don't know. You want him to go into a little more of what we got? We can. Um, it's up yeah, to you. Uh, real quick. I just want to know, like, did you fall in love with Hank the moment you were introduced to it? Like, how long in your career before you started running it, or is that something you ran all the time? I liked it from the get-go. Same as, as Dragon, you know, with uh, drag and slant behind it or Dallas double slants. Anything where I can just get the ball and, and rip it out quick release. Uh, you know, I felt I had a good release, and it's quick, and I just love throwing those – easy non you know layered reads where you had to d decipher the depth of the drops and the coverages just slants damn near good versus everything so is hank you know someone's going to be open uh so yeah hank was always a great route ran it a ton in my career in the nfl like i said i probably if i went back and watched him i was probably 80 plus percent throwing that that concept and uh, not all of them were just over the ball to the wall either <laughs> okay well yeah uh, let me see some more let, let's see some more Cool. Well, yeah. Um, I don't know if Chad can talk or if you want me to yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah. Here. No, Chad. Chad, you're on it, man. I'm going to hand it over to Chad Freehoff, everybody. Former Harlan Hill Trophy winner out of Colorado School of Mines. He's going to give you a little rundown of what we got and what we can do for you with the ready list. <clears throat> Thanks, Jake. Uh, yeah, I'll just yeah. show you a little teaser of, of our, our testing capability, and that's the niche of our company. And hopefully from here, we'll, you'll uh, pique your interest enough that you guys can go to our website and kind of uh, – uh, schedule a demo. So the, the button here, the, the test, this is your kids logging in on their phones or tablets. Um, we have four offensive quizzes, four defensive quizzes, and, and multiple choice can, can, work, can work both ways. And if there's one thing that you take away from uh, this little teaser here is you do not have to create these quizzes or learning modules. These are automatically um, done with our special algorithms from our, our coding on the back end of our app. So once you draw in your play, our app knows what to quiz on, on these different um, uh, 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 tests. So again, you do not have to create these. These are automatically wow. done. But the first one here is the formation. Pretty straightforward. Ace right is our call. Um, they're just dragging and dropping the players into the correct alignment. Um, I read a stat somewhere that if you can allow 
Uh, kids that interact with the content through this tactile learning, they'll retain three and a half times more than if they just stared at those, those uh, playbook images. So um, they move their players, uh, submit their answer, gives them immediate feedback on the correct answers versus the incorrect answers. And, and now they show the play and it will show them what the answers are. Um, as the formations, next one here is the route concepts. Uh, pretty straightforward, uh, testing on what they, uh, routes they should be running for this play. Um, this is a sneak peek of our, our signal video feature be out prior to the season. If you call your plays using signals, um, they would need to associate that signal with the play call. Um, but they just select the player. Um, our app, app generates three wrong answers and one correct choice uh, for this play. And they just go through and select the correct route for this concept. Again, they hit uh, submit their answer. Again, red is wrong, green is correct. And now if they hit the show play, this will toggle back to the playbook where they can get directly to the playbook and your teaching points if they need a refresher and then toggle back to the test and, and carry on with the rest of the, the plays in that folder. Um, next here is the run game and pass protections function the same way. We can test six different blocking types. Um, our call here is 37 zones. So I'm gonna go more of a, a zone concept, two for two on the front side of our play here. Uh, our guard and tackle are working through the end of the wheel. So they're just moving with their finger, those players to who they're blocking. And again, that's a two for two concept, same way here with the, the uh, center and guard working through the nose to the buck. And then now the backside of our call is going to be more of a man concept. So they're going to go to the man tool. However, they move their finger or their mouse, that's how the block is going to be drawn. And now they're submitting their answer. And again, it will grade them, uh, show them what the correct answer should be on, on the backside, scooping up to the mic and, and to the defensive end. Uh, next one here is the quarterback progressions. Depending on how you coaches teach progression, progressions, you can put different defensive looks on the back end, two high looks, single high looks, if your coverage uh, progressions are based on coverage. My look here now, I'm just working high to low uh, from the Z to the back, uh, one to two. I'll get a wrong answer here with my Y is not in our progressions, but you can quiz your quarterbacks on where they should be going uh, with the football. Again, this is just automatically uh, pulled from your drawings. You don't have to do anything to create these, uh, these little quizzes here. Fronts, for, more for your defense. Um, whatever your defensive drawing is, they're just moving the players over the offensive linemen, whether they're head up, inside shade, outside shade. And um, again, quizzing the players that were aligned in the box for your defensive play. Don't pull all those over. Um, you get the idea with, with that concept. And then two more here I want to show you is the defensive line. Um, whether these are your run fits or blitz gap responsibilities, they are just moving those players uh, to match your drawing. And again, submitting their answer. Um, I should have been A gap and, and B gap to the strength of the formation here. And then the last one I'll show you is for the linebackers and defensive back um, quizzes. Uh, depending on how you, you teach your def defenses, the first uh, way for, to quiz them is on drop zones. If you teach your defenses on, on drop zones, my will is a hook to curl player. They can move those players to those different zones. Maybe your Sam is a curl to flat player. Same way on the back end. Uh, for the defensive back test, hey, is he a middle third deep half player? Uh, but you can create those uh, quizzes from your drawing. And then the next example here, whether it's linebackers or defensive backs for the teams that teach their route, uh, teach their defenses based on route concepts, um, pattern reading, whatever you want to call it, they're moving those players um, based on those route concepts. Again, you can put the drop zones on there as well as the route concepts if that's the way you want to teach your defense and, and how you teach your defense. So uh, that's a real quick uh, sneak peek uh, teaser for our video. Go to our website, Ready List Sports. Um, you can contact us if you want to see a full demo and we can go back to the drawing tool and um, go through the, the quizzes one more time and answer any questions. Um, again, our, our number one goal is to help players learn faster, retain more, make better use of their study time and provide them some structure on how to go study and then provide you as a coach uh, Simple, easy to use drawing tool. You saw our, our drawing tool. Our goal is to draw your play in under a minute and then uh, provide you that accountability tool so you understand what your players know and, and what they don't know. So, Okay, we got it. We got a couple. Of, first off, that's really neat about how you can, if I'm doing zone, I just have to grab a guy and then comp that. It's kudos to you, man. Um, first off, uh, one coach wants to know, is this a program that you sell? Do we just upload it? So let's say, I get this, do I upload my own playbook or do I have to uh, draw all the plays up first and then use it? Yeah, so, so it is a, an app. So you can log on through, through your iOS or Android uh, devices or you can log on through the computer through our website. Uh, so that's the first question. 
The second question, everything that you see is customizable to your personnel groupings, your formations, your splits, your routes. Um, we do have preloaded things that you can leverage, whether it's formation, we have 46 pre-drawn routes that you can go in there. Once you've imported them, you can go change them to make, make them match your terminology. If it's a corner route, you can name it a seven route or whatever those teaching points that you wanna do. Maybe you run it at 12 and not 10. Um, they're just templates to get started. And from there, you can make it yours. But everything that you see is customizable to, to your offense or defense. Okay. What about test? If I'm the coach and let's say you're the player, do I get your results from that test? Absolutely. So this is the scoring that the coaches get back in real time. Uh, the first dashboard here is kind of an overall, uh, you know, look at your team of what they know, all your plays tests lumped together, all your fronts tests. And then if you click on the test, this is diving deeper into the data and analytics here. Um, these would be all the different playbooks or folders that you've made available and then a team average score. Um, and then if you click on that folder, it'll break it down to all your players here. Uh, your rosters on, would be here on the left and you get a score for each player for that. Come on, folder. Mike. Mike, Mike's got to pick it up a little bit yeah, right there. Right? He's been out of the game a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, if you click on the player, it'll actually break it down to what they know by position and then by play and then kind of an overall time. So it does give you some, again, some valuable information to cater your meeting time, walkthrough and practice time to, to what Jake mentioned earlier and making you more efficient as a coach and spending less time on the field or, or focus on things that, that uh, players need to, to focus on. Okay. I'll add one, I'll add one, Chad. You're creating more players that can play across the board too, not just an X receiver, but now he knows Z, F, and then he might even be able to drop, drop in and play some QB because he's just been going through the progressions because he loves ball and he's on this for an extra 20 minutes every day learning the game. And, you know, it's just a way to give kids that are hungry a better way to maximize their learning potential and, and raise their knowledge. Now, how much would this have helped you when you were in college or in the NFL or even in high school? <sighs> I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that and then I'll let Chad answer it because it's the reason behind this. But for me, immensely, you can go to bed with taking a test every night. So you get your, you get your game plan Wednesday, you go to practice, you study, your, study it like crazy. And then you got to put that behind because the next day, Thursday is now third down and, and working on different parts of the game. You still visit some of the game plan, but not all of it. To be able to study that and go to bed with 100% and go, ah. <sighs> Time to sleep. I did my work. Would have been amazing. Also, on the back end, it could have been tough where you won't go to bed until you get 100% and you may be up for a long time. But we hope to like provide those multiple learning styles to eliminate someone with a learning disability or maybe they're not learning the way their coach is presenting it. Now you're giving them all the ways to learn. So I know it would have been huge for me. I'll let Chad speak on it because you know, it was him and his experience that brought this about. Yeah, so that's where Jake and I's relationship started. I was fortunate enough to sign with the Broncos. And even though uh, I did have that photographic memory, uh, when I got into Coach Shanahan and Coach Kubiak's offense, I really struggled with the auditorial piece. When somebody tells me something, it kind of goes in one ear and out the other. So um, I figured if I was struggling, there's a lot of teammates out there struggling as well. And everybody learns differently, whether it's tactile, video, auditorial, which, which we include the signal videos. And um, my career, I ended up on nine professional teams in seven years. So I got to be somewhat of an expert on learning playbooks. Yeah. Um, that's not a great story to tell. Um, but yeah, that's where the idea originated. So definitely on, on my, all my trials and tribulations of, of trying to make it in, in professional football would have been, um, you know, fantastic. It's all good startups come from uh, an idea of necessity and I definitely needed it uh, in my career. No, I, I, I do like this. Now, I Let's say I have a play. Is there a way I can show a clip of that play? So let's say I draw up stick and then, or can I show them a play of stick or I know this is young. So I just, I saw the, I saw the, the formation or the signaling, which I thought was unbelievable because right there is one of the problems I face because we're all formation based and the kids always forget the formations. So if there's a way I can just show them the formation and then have them take the test right there. Holy exactly. crap. That's amazing. The video piece is kind of our last piece to complete the learning cycle. Um, we have done some animation piece for the kids that just need to see the, the players move. So whether this is the offense or defense uh, drawing, whatever you have drawn for those kids that need to see this piece, um, it is available. Again, you don't need to do anything to create the animation piece here, but um, definitely in our product mode roadmap of being able to, to drop in those huddle clips or exos clips for the players that need to see it done on the field is, is definitely very important. Okay. 
That is, I, I freaking love that. Uh, Coach Carlson says, I got the app, so I have to call them to get it set up. Again, coaches, if you want to set up a demo, there it is right there. It is in chat. Uh, Todd says, this is crazy. I haven't seen anything like this. How much does it cost? And it is a yearly subscription or a one-time thing? Yeah, depending on kind of the, the level here, we have youth pricing, high school pricing, college pricing. Um, and I'll just mention that the high school pricing with, with the clinic here, um, uh, mention you're on the clinic as 20% discount. It's 199 gets you the coach account. All your coaches can use the same account. So you don't need to go spend a ton of money on, on coaches accounts. You can all be in there drawing at the same time, all syncs up to one cloud uh, account. And then we did a per user model. Um, so depending on uh, your budget or how you want to attack it, you want your entire program, you know, your varsity, just your offense, you can, you can do it that way. It's, it's $10 per player. And both of those are for a 12 month subscription. Okay. Uh, and then for the youth side, it's, it's, uh, it's cheaper. Uh, $99 gets you the youth account. And then it's $5 per month uh, gets you uh, the coach account. And then uh, each team kind of has their own score uh, store, excuse me. And they can send out the link to the parents if that's how they want to uh, attack collecting payment for the youth side. Okay. Now, do they all have the same like functionality? Does the youth have the same functions but as the high school or they're like skewed more toward that? The main difference for the youth in the high school is the, the length of the su subscription. Um, the youth account is a six months, so it's basically halved of what okay. uh, the high school is. Yep. Okay. Dang, this is – I wish I had this when I was in high school. I, I, was like, I was like you, Jake. I would watch the uh, VHSs that my coaches would make a VHS for me, and I'd go, and I'd watch it. I was a middle linebacker, and I, would, I was the only one that would map out things as well. I, I did a wow. lot of padding because I was incredibly slow. So I had to use my brains a little bit. So uh, it's helpful. We're just, like I said, trying to, what's not, what hasn't changed in years as far as, you know, how it's prepared, how it's presented and how it's taught and then learned is, you know, it's worked, but we're trying to just hopefully create more time either for coaches to, to get off the practice field because you're so efficient, you're not wasting reps or wasting time telling guys what to do and get you home sooner or you get a chance now to, instead of telling kids where to go you actually get to tell them once they get there and if you're a good coach what technique do i use to beat this guy now we can talk level of the game that helps these kids do what try to reach their dream i had a dream growing up i wanted to be in the nfl and play in the super bowl i believed in that dream and i almost achieved it so coaches the challenge is to like help the kids right to give them every tool possible that could be there. If you can't afford this as a team or your booster club, go to the quarterback's dads and say, yo, we got a tool. Your kid wants to get better. Let's get you on here. And they'll pay for it. Trust me. Cause they'll yeah. pay me a couple hundred bucks just to work with their little 10 year old for, for an hour. And what am I going to be able to teach him? I need to go to a Creek or go to Lake and skip rocks to get him ready to play quarterback. That's what I think. But this kind of a tool, you know, we're trying to make it affordable, intuitive, and seamless so they can get to getting uh, on this and help their players, you know, play faster, have less stress and be prepared so that, you know, it comes down to, can you beat the guy across from you or not? It wasn't because you didn't know what you were doing. And this is something that is prime right now because of the lockdown, how we don't, a lot of schools, including myself, we missed spring ball. I'm, I'm a new OC at a new school. I'm an OC at a new school. So I didn't even have a chance to put in the offense. So I'm doing we can help it you, all man. through. Say what? We can help you. We can help you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know a lot of coaches that can do that as well. So, again, is is the uh, contact page, is that the best page for them to get in touch with you? Yeah, just hit the contact page, fill out their, their name and, and email, and then we can get back to them and, and get something scheduled. All right. And, again, coaches, that is in the uh, chat box. It will also be in the description when this is over with. And if you're watching this, it is, it'll also be in the very first uh, pinned comment. So, hey, guys, I, I know you all are busy. I, thank you all so much for doing this. Like, seriously, nah, this, this was a blast. Thank you, Coach. We're, we're excited whenever we get a coach that sees something that, you know, can help them and help others and is willing to help us get the word out. It's how we're growing this grassroots trusting, you know, the ghost great coaches that want to help kids get better to be their, you know, mentors and help guide them through life and all the challenges, like help them, help them out on the field. That's one way to help them have uh, a good experience and remember it in a good life. Okay. And coaches, again, if you want to get in contact with them, it is in the, uh, the comment section. 
And uh, hey, guys, thanks for joining us. Again, if this is any good, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, give me a thumbs up, all that stuff. You know what it is. And until next time, let's continue to master the spread, score points, and have fun. I will see y'all 